Hi there guys, welcome back. So I know this is not an international game and I normally only preview and review international games but the Heineken Champions Cup um, is basically the nearest you're gonna get to an international inner club game. In fact, I would say it is the biggest club game in the world. Um, comment below if you think there's a, a bigger one but it, the quality is so high in this competition. Uh, they always or nearly always put out full strength sides for this. So this is, I think, the strongest club competition in the world. And we finish off with, I think, the two best sides in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, Saracens and Leinster. Uh, now their quarterfinals, sorry, their semifinals were really good, really strong um, against uh, Saracens versus Munster and then Leinster versus Toulouse. Um, however, the best teams won. Uh, Toulouse and Munster put up a great fight, loads of heart, uh, but they just simply weren't good enough and it showed. So we've got the two best sides, which is awesome. As you can see, I've got the Leinster shirt on, which I was very kindly donated, so very proud to wear it. Um, I respect and absolutely love watching Leinster. Uh, and as an England fan, obviously I've got an affinity to Saracens as well. So, you know, there's two sides I'm really interested in and can't wait to see what happens in this match. So I'm gonna do a little preview of it, um, tell you who I think is most likely to win. You know, you never can say for sure this team is definitely gonna win, but I kind of go with percentages and things like that and see where there's some mismatches in the size potentially and areas where they could get an edge on each other. So let's go for it. Now firstly, what I really like about both these sides is they are essentially based on their national teams. And then in amongst that, they've got a smattering, not too many, a few high quality internationals and international players from other countries. Um, and then some top club players who are on the fringe of international, maybe not quite. So it's just a lovely mix. You know, it's not a side that is essentially built on, let's say, South Africans or built on Pacific Islanders. You know, it is the home uh, country's team plus a few foreign players to add something to that team. So I love that. Um, in the teams and I love the fact that they've brought through players from the academy, local players as well um, and I just think it's, it's brilliant, it's good for England, it's good for Ireland. So let's have a look through that core of these teams and see where maybe the edge is. So if you start with Leinster, you know, my goodness me, I've put some typical teams up on the side here. I don't know exactly what the teams are going to be for the final yet, but it's not going to be too far away from the teams on the side. Um, and, and Leinster is essentially almost all Irish internationals and almost all Irish international starters. You know, go through um, Carney, Lama could easily be a starter. Ringrose Henshaw is probably the starting centre partnership, I think, anyway. Then in the back line, you've got James Lowe, who's your, your one, if you like, your one international star. Um, you know, even though he's not playing international at the moment, he'd probably get into any other team. Um, uh, on the wing, then Sexton and McGrath, uh, an Irish halfback pairing, obviously Sexton starting uh, 10 for Ireland. Then you've got um, Healy and Furlong, the two props who are the starting props. Cronin is arguably your number two hooker, although he's probably the impact hooker and maybe not the number two starter. But anyway, that's another, another video. Then the second row, Toner and Ryan could easily be the starting second rows for the World Cup. It's a fantastic mix. We'll get into details in a minute. And then in the back row, uh, you've got Sean O'Brien and Conan or Josh van der Fleer maybe, if he's fit instead of O'Brien or maybe van der Fleer's on the bench. Um, but then in amongst that, you've got the one foreign star in the forwards in Scott Fardy. Um, to add his experience, his, well, he's an out and out six. So it's fantastic, you've got James Lowe supplementing the backs and Fardy supplementing the forwards and the rest are essentially Irish internationals. It's almost perfect to be honest. That's one of the strengths in the Leinster team is, is their balance, which I'll come back to. Saracens is close, it's not quite as strong as that, which again, you know, it's a slight area where May Leinster may have the edge. Um, if you look through that back line, so if you look through their lineup, Saracens, the, the spine, the core of their team is still English internationals and mainly starters. So you look at Billy Villapona at eight, both second rows could easily be the starters for England in Otoje and Cruz. And then you've got Mako, Villapona and Jamie George who are absolute starters for England in the front row. And then they'll probably have um, a foreign star at tighthead. Um, then in the back row, you've got Michael Rhodes and Jackson Ray, who are you know, 
English qualified players, probably not quite internationals yet. They could certainly do a job at international, but they're those almost perfect club players for Saracens where they're as good as an international, but they don't play international, so they're available all the time. So very reliable there. In the centres, you've got Brad Barrett, who again doesn't play for England anymore. You know, you could argue, oh, he's good enough still to play for England. But part of the reason I think why he's playing this well is because he's not playing for England. He can save himself, etc. Lazowski is on the fringes of England. Sean Maitland's very experienced, uh, Scottish international. And Alex Good is good enough to play for England, but doesn't. So it's a very strong mix, mainly English spine again. Not quite as many starters as the Leinster team there. So again, maybe a slight edge to Leinster. So they're the teams potentially. Let's just have a chat about the, the playing styles. Um, now, the strength with Leinster is they can almost play any style. Um, they're strong in all areas. Where, where could Saracens possibly get the edge over them? Well, I think Saracens will, ex will play a, a kicking game. I think almost definitely they'll play a kicking game to start with. Spencer's an excellent kicker. And incidentally, Spencer, I think, is the best English number nine at the moment. Again, that's a different video, but he is, I think, hands above the best nine this season for England. Great kicker. Farrell, obviously, a good kicker. Lazowski, a good kicker. Maitland, good. They've got a lot of kicking. And they've got good chasing. Liam Williams is an absolute class act in all areas, especially chasing high balls. Um, and it's not the Leinster are weak at fielding high balls. Again, you look at their, their back line. Do you want to kick to Lama and Lowe particularly? Mm, not if you get it wrong. Carney's obviously one of the best in the world. But I think it's an area where they're going to try and attack them. If they can get an edge in the kicking game, Saracens have a chance. It's a big if. But I think they're going to try, for sure. Um, and then they're going to play their aggressive defence when they see weakness, if they see weakness in the Leinster attack. If Leinster get on the roll, get on the front foot, it's going to be so hard for Saracen. It's going to be so hard <coughs> to stop Leinster attacking. But they're going to wait for those opportunities and try. Leinster could play the kicking game for sure, no problem. But they've got more options, I would say. So let's have a look at their back lines, for example. Running threat. And running threat in rugby is huge and is very natural as well. Um, Look at, say, uh, the two wingers, Jordan Lama, James Lowe, compared to Williams and Maitland. For Leinster, that's two firecracking running wingers. Power and pace, amazing feet. For Saracens, Liam Williams is your star, your all rounder and your star runner. Maitland, I think, is a little bit on the decline. He's a good, solid player, but in pure power and pace, I think Leinster have it there. Um, so there's an edge there. Running game in the centres, I think it's the same. Uh, Brad Barrett is very strong at running direct lines. Lazowski's quick, but essentially he's an all-rounder skill player. Um, you know, he's a 10 converted to 13, very skillful. But compared to Henshaw and Ringrose, that, that running threat of Henshaw and Ringrose is superior, in my opinion. And maybe, you could argue, uh, barrett Lazowski could match him or edge them in defence. You've got the skills of Lazowski as a, a 10 playing 13. That maybe Leinster don't quite have, but still, I think pure attacking threat, when you look at Lama, Ringrose, Henshaw, Low, it's better, essentially. So that is a slight advantage, if Leinster choose to use them. Um, and then hopefully, if, you know, Leinster will want to get on the front foot in their phases, and then the spaces should open up for those guys, that would be the theory. Uh, will they try and play wide and use these guys to start with early on in the game? That'll be interesting to see. I would imagine... Because it's almost an international lineup, we'll get an international start where it is a bit more of a kicking battle, feeling each other out. Anyway, in the halfback pairings, I can't see any advantage anywhere. You've got Spencer and McGrath, who are both fringe international players, but still very good. Um, like I said, Spencer especially, I think, has been... is probably the best nine on the pitch, actually. I think he's a, a real star for Saracen, so possibly they could get an edge there, actually. But Farrell and Sexton, we know they're almost very similar in the way they approach the game, their styles in a way. Um, on the line, uh, British and Irish Lions tour, we saw that they were the main men. Uh, you can almost separate them. So, fantastic match up there, but I can't see an edge. In the front rows, really, really strong. 
Saracens, Vinopola and George, outstanding players. Healing and Furlong, outstanding players. Um, top, top internationals. Cronin is a brilliant player. Uh, maybe, you know, as a starter for Ireland, they don't quite fancy him. But for Leinster, he fits in really well. Leinster play a bit more rugby than Ireland, potentially. And um, Cronin is a fantastic runner with the ball. Um, interestingly, on the tight head for Saracens, they'll probably start with Lamassetti, uh, if I said that correctly. They could start with Vincent Koch, but they didn't in the semis. And I believe... Um, he played uh, last week, which is kind of saying that he might not start. Um, Lamassetti, or Lamassetti, however I say it, apologies. He's actually American, come from NFL, and um, he's developed into a fantastic prop. I think he was a running back in American football, and um, I don't know, don't know if he actually played NFL, but he came from American football collegiate system, I believe. Um, so he's got that power game and he's added the rugby skills and a bit more size. He's a real one to watch, actually. He's a bit of a dark horse. But you would say that with the three Irish internationals, possibly they'll look to target him. We'll see. Maybe scrummaging, possibly. Leinster have the edge. I don't know. Um, Vinopola and George are awesome around the pitch, very skillful as well. On pure skills, I think maybe Saracen potentially have the edge there, but the front rows are fantastic. Um, going into the second rows, wow. So this is so balanced, it's unbelievable. It's Toja and Cruz, what a great pairing. But then you've got Ryan and Tona, what a great pairing. I mean, who's going to win the line out, for example? You've got the master tactician in Cruz and Tona, but then Tona's got that unbelievable height. Um, you, you can't really get near him if they if Lentz to get their throw right to him. A Toje is very athletic and get up quick, as can um, Ryan. It's going to be a ding dong battle. I think they're both going to have success in the line out, and they'll both fancy stealing opposition ball. That's going to be awesome. Um, don't be surprised if maybe they don't kick for line outs as much potentially. I don't know, or maybe they back themselves uh, and go for it. But that's brilliant. Let's look at the back row. Leinster's back row balance is, is almost perfect. That's the thing. And that's, again, a little edge for Leinster. Fardy is an out-and-out -out six, as is Michael Rhodes. But Fardy, I think, is a proven international. He's you know, possibly a little tougher, maybe. Rhodes, I wanted to have a look at him for England um, earlier on this year, but didn't happen. You know, he's, he's going to be close, but I'd probably tip Fardy. Excellent line-out forward, both of them, but maybe, again, Fardy slightly better. Number seven, Sean O'Brien versus Jackson Ray. Jackson Ray, one of those underrated players, fringe international quality. But Sean O'Brien has come back to fitness. He's getting better and better and better. Didn't have the best Six Nations, but I think he's very close to where he's going to be at his, his peak at the moment. Um, and if Josh van der Fleer is on the bench or even starts, that's, that's impressive. So I think that's an edge there at seven. Uh, Conan is an out and out eight. He's a brilliantly balanced eight. He does everything, carries handles, uh, low error rates. Uh, for sheer power, clearly Billy Vinopola wins that. Um, but you know, as an all-round eight, Conan's fantastic. So that Fardy, O'Brien, Conan balance is brilliant. As with the Saracens balance, it's very good. Uh, who would I give it to? Possibly on pure quality across the board, Leinster. Power, maybe, you know, eight, obviously, even the polar. But then if Joss van der Fleer's in the mix as well, that's just, you know, another extra player to throw his weight behind that back row. Maybe Porter's going to be fit and back on the bench. That's going to be big for them as well. Both going to have huge benches. Uh, but again, possibly a little more on Leinster's side. I don't know. Anyway, as you can probably tell, I am saying it's probably about 55%, I'd say, or 60%, Leinster win, uh, 50 for, uh, 45 or 40% Saracens win. So I don't quite see it as 50-50, it's close, but I would edge it to Leinster, not by a huge amount. Maximum I'd give is 60-40 Leinster, maybe 55-45 Leinster. Um, both sides can win, both sides would be worthy champions if they do play better than the other side. Uh, it's just set up perfectly. I think we're going to be fully stacked, all the stars, best club game in the world. Who's going to win? You tell me. Until next time, hopefully we'll review the actual match. Um, until then, I will see you later.